it's kind of amazing looking at the narrative when it comes to the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom of seeing people insist that like it's not talked about, it's not relevant, this isn't a game of the year contender, this isn't gonna this isn't a shoe in for game of the year. This is something that was just a flash in the pan success that came out and everyone immediately forgot existed. It's it reminds me a lot of what happened when Metroid Dread came out, right? Where a lot of people saying this was not a big deal, that Metroid had fallen off, that Nintendo had waited too long to put out a new Metroid game. And, like, you know, a couple years later, I find that the game is still being talked about. The game is still popular. Having replayed the game myself, I've realized that, like, Metroid Dread is even better than I initially said it was. And I do think that is the real issue here, is that the reason that Tears of the Kingdom isn't talked about is because every time that someone brings up the game positively, wants to talk about how good it is, how engaging it is, how much good it does, not only for the Zelda IP, but for the brand in general, for Nintendo, they get shouted down by the detractors, people who just hate Nintendo and want to see them fail. And of course, it's not just Tears of the Kingdom, right? We've been seeing this all year long with games like Fire Emblem Engage, with Advance Wars, with Mario Wonder. Like, how many times have we heard people try and scream at us that these games are failures, that they aren't going to be successful, that uh, Switch 2 is on the horizon, that there are no major games coming out for the remainder of the Switch life cycle, which, you know, is going to be over by the... Uh, by mid-2023, early 2023, I think they were saying last year, like, why why are we still acting as if, like, uh, the masses can dictate what is and isn't popular? You know, what is and isn't good? Because there is no denying that Tears of the Kingdom is more talked about, more popular than basically any other game that came out this year right it's bigger than Baldur's Gate 3 it's bigger than Hogwarts Legacy it's bigger than Star World well, it's basically a shoe in for game of the year right like this should be going into the game of the year season with this this, this just this expectation that it will win but instead, we're doing this weird thing where we're kind of like, oh, but uh, but Baldur's Gate three came out of nowhere, and it was it was a uh, it did so much for the CRPG genre, and it it was uh it was and so much sex in it. Like I I don't know, it's so woke, guys. I I don't know if Zelda can beat it. It is, it is a sheer cope. Okay, Baldur's Gate three doesn't even come close to what Tears of the Kingdom accomplished, right? Like, it's not even close, right? But we're st it feels as if everyone's kind of rallying behind Baldur's Gate 3 because they really have nothing else. They have to keep up this facade. They have to keep trying to trick you that Nintendo is not on top of their game, right? They have to keep tricking you into thinking that Switch isn't relevant, that it isn't, that it isn't competitively viable with other platforms, that, like, Nintendo hasn't killed it this year with Game Awards. Because this isn't just about Tears of the Kingdom. It's about the Switch in general. It is about Nintendo as a whole. How often have we seen these people try and come out and try to aggressively go after every major Nintendo release. You know, whether it's like Cereza and the Lost Demon or or something like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, like, we have seen this time and time again, these people screaming at the top of their lungs about how these Nintendo games aren't good, how they aren't successful, and how you shouldn't care about them, right? WarioWare Move It is a, a recent example where the narrative initially was that it wasn't selling very well, right? That it was way, trailing way, way behind WarioWare move, uh, Get It Together, right? But upon looking at the numbers, seeing how it's still selling on the eShop, like, there's no way that's, that's possible, right? Like, you know, it, if it's not doing as well as Get It Together, so what? These games are, like, extremely cheap to produce, right? It was a, it was a packed holiday season, even though people won't admit it was a packed holiday season. You know, we are... People are aggressively going after every single Nintendo release that comes out, right? You know, you know when Mario RPG comes out tomorrow, you know, well, at midnight, like, we're gonna, 
we're going to see a lot of people try to tell you, like, oh, it's just a remake. They haven't changed a whole lot. But that's what we want out of remakes. We don't want remakes to completely rethink the entire experience, right? Super Mario RPG looks like it's very faithful to the original, for better or for worse, right? You know, I'm not crazy about Super Mario RPG, but I'm honestly really glad that Nintendo respected the fans of the game and decided to uh, to keep it the way it was, you know? You know, re-release this this title that people, see, like, have some nostalgia for and just keep it the way it always was with, like, some minor visual upgrades and rebalancing, right? Like, that's all you have to do for these remakes, right? But, you know, you're, you just know people are going to complain about that. You know, you know people are just going to find something to complain about. Like, uh, going into the Game Awards season, like, we, we, we really do need to acknowledge this is... That Nintendo did exceedingly well this year, okay? They put out banger after banger after banger. The only, like, poor release, I would say, the major release that I personally was disappointed with was Pikmin 4. And, like, you'll notice that I'm not hyping up Pikmin 4 in these videos because I know it doesn't deserve to win shit, okay? Like, look at how I treat Pikmin 4 versus how I treat Tears of the Kingdom versus how I treat Super Mario Bros. Wonder versus how I treat Fire Emblem Engage and Serenity's and the Lost Demon and Advance Wars and all, all these other games that came out this year that were better than it, right? Like, there is no denying that Pikmin 4 was a disappointment, but there is also no denying that all of these other Nintendo games especially Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Bros. Wonder, have been major, major successes. And we are still seeing people refuse to admit that, right? And, and I do think that is the trend in, in this part of, uh, in the past couple of years, is that we are seeing these major, major success stories. Games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, games like Splatoon 3, games like, uh, you know, Luigi's Mansion 3, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Like, uh... We are seeing a lot of these major, major releases just just get ignored. You know, all of these hyper-successful games that are doing, like, wonders for Nintendo, right? You know, <laughs> a Super Mario Bros. wonder, you could say. Wonders for Nintendo are coming out being huge, huge deals, right? Huge, huge successes. And, like, we're seeing the entire industry try and turn its back on it, right? Try and, like, act as if, like, Switch isn't competitive. That, like, you know, there's a real shot that Baldur's Gate 3 or Alan Wake 2 are, like, comparable to Tears of the Kingdom. And I do think that's the thing to uh, to, take, to take away from this, is that, like, you know, there are going to be bad Game of the Year picks, okay? Like, it remains to be seen if, like, uh, they're going to give something to Game of the Year to something that isn't a Nintendo game. Well, we'll have to wait and see on that, but, like... I think it's safe to say that there are a lot of things that are coming out in the near future that aren't going to be good. Like, a lot of games that are going to be nominated and uh, and and uh, given awards at the Game Awards that really don't deserve to be talked about at all. You know, like, it was crazy how I was scrolling through, those list, uh, through that list and seeing how many, like, bad games were on there. Games that, like, nobody cares about anymore. While, like, the stuff that people actually like were being, like, ignored and being, like, downplayed, right? It's been, like, it's been an issue for a long time. The Game Awards is corrupt. Like, it is no indication of quality. It is no indication of, like, what's actually successful. It is no true celebration of the Gaming Awards. And that is, uh, of, uh, of gaming, right? And that is why we need to openly condemn the Game Awards, right? Even at this point, right? You know, even looking at the nominees, the show hasn't even happened yet. But even just looking at the nominees, I am unhappy with what we're seeing here. Like, the Game Awards has already disappointed me before it's even gone live because the stuff they're showing off isn't good. The stuff they've nominated isn't good, right? Uh, the stuff they're focusing on isn't good, right? Like, why are all the games they're celebrating not very good, right? Like, we... It's important to talk about this kind of stuff, you know? No matter what happens... Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Wonder, and, you know, all these other Nintendo games are going to be, like, much more popular and talked about than the vast majority of the games talked about uh, the, at the Game Awards this year. You know, Baldur's Gate 3 could win, 
And I, I expect like five years from now, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be w far more well remembered than it, right? You know, we, we've seen similar things happen to like Metroid Dread and stuff like that, right? The Game Awards has no control over how the audience plays and enjoys these games. And as a result, why in the world would I ever take them seriously?